So this is the uh, uh, video discussion of Chapter 3, Cisco 4, entitled Branch. So in this chapter, we are to cover uh, two popular broadband technologies, the uh, DSL and the, and the cable. We are to compare and contrast the two uh, technology. Um, and then we are to cover PPPoE, VPN, and uh, GRE and BGP. So we learned during our Cisco one that we have two types of uh, signal, both bo baseband and broadband. Okay, uh, new technology is the broadband. Okay, a uh, legacy one is the baseband. Uh, before, like if example in the internet with the baseband, what we can only see uh, in our computer when we access the net, the internet is our old text, right? But nowadays, um, audio and video uh, can be uh, transmitted they are supported by our internet technology and this is what we mean by broadband okay the capability of our technology to accept processed audio and video format that type of a signal that is what uh, defines broadband in broadband uh, we have two popular technologies the cable like here in the philippines the provider is sky and then the DSL, and which is in here in the Philippines, the provider is the is PLDT. So in a cable system, okay, uh, I have here a simple a, a setup of a uh, unexpected setup of a cable system. Okay, be familiar with terms. Let's say from the subscriber side, there is a distribution cable, usually made up of coaxial, right? Okay. Uh, that goes into an amplifier and goes in through this trunk trunk okay usually this trunk is uh, the one is made up of fiber optic okay? if you notice like with sky when when they uh, have this smart if one in sky what is posted in their website is a hybrid right uh, fiber coaxial this means it's a cable internet it's a cable technology, coaxial cable, that's what it means by the, the cable. But it's not pure coaxial. There is now part uh, in the infrastructure made up of fiber optic. And actually, there's even more of the fiber optic part because the trunk, it's, uh, uh, it's the connection from one, one city to another. So, uh, and it's all pure fiber optic. Okay. Uh, so... So that's a setup. Ano? So we have the trunk going to the head end, going to sky office, and then you, we have the transportation system, then the antenna side to connect uh, in a much la longer distances. Okay, say from the Philippines to other country. Amplifier, okay, amplifier is a um, a device that amplifies, strengthens the signal. Take note, our cables has this maximum distance. Uh, coverage so there is a need for a device to amplify strengthen the signal and that's the amplifier okay so these are the set this is the setup we have in a cable system coaxial cable a cable okay cable internet for example okay ignore the coaxial it's cable internet okay so so uh, on the subscriber side subscriber side okay um, we have a cable modem, okay? A cable modem. Again, by definition, ano, a modem is a device that translates the signal, right? It translates the signal. Say, for example, analog to digital and then vice versa, digital to analog. That's how we, we define a cable modem, okay? So, on the subscriber side, we have that cable modem, okay? And then, uh, this one cable modem uh, and then on the service provider side we have the cmts cable modem termination system okay uh, it's like a switch this is where all the, the subscribers are connected on the subscriber side again we call it as cmts okay so we expect that in the on the hand end head end um, there's also a router 
and inside the router there is a database and in the database this is where all the subscribers account are listed okay uh, CMTS is like a switch uh, or an old one type we call as multiplexer it doesn't have the uh, capacity to uh, process this user accounts we do have this kinds of uh, system in a router later we'll discuss pppoe that's how it is okay uh, but pppoe usually is used in uh, dsl okay so there that's the cable uh, component parts and then the dsl dsl stands for digital subscribers line in the history before we only have dial up dial up has a bandwidth of, our, of uh, 64k bps and then less of the overhead what remains in the data is 56k bps okay in the dial up so what we usually have on the subscriber side is we have a modem right dial up modem okay and then on the service provider side we have this uh, multiplexer the telephone switch okay this is all this this switch this is where also our lad line are connected okay and then uh with the with a couple of improvements they uh before this multiplexer can only accept they so it can, can only accept voice but then later on with a couple of improvements they uh it, it can it has the capability to accept data okay so before internet is uh, being is ride ride over okay it is being uh, connect it is connected to this multiplexer uh, telephone or telephone switch okay so uh, the ne next in the improvement is uh, they have increased the frequency of this multiplexer and in effect the bandwidth is also increased Okay. the bandwidth is also increased and that results to this DSL okay digital subscribers line okay okay so there um, uh, other parameters for uh, other things to take note in DSL is that there are different variants of DSL but the two popular variants is the asymmetric uh, what we see in the market are ADSL in ADSL uh, it has different Downs, download, uh, yeah, downstream and upstream bandwidth, okay, or download, upload bandwidth, okay. So that's ADSL, and again, what we usually see in the market are ADSL, okay, because in the subscriber side, most of the time, what we, what the subscriber side do, customer is, uh, down, download, diba? So it, the, you need, uh, you need, we need to provide much higher bandwidth in the download. In the upload, usually what happens are just requests. You type yahoo.com, that's an upload. And then later on, the Yahoo server will send the whole page. That's the download. And it, and sending the whole page from the server to the client requires a higher uh, bandwidth. Symmetric DSL. In symmetric, the download and upload has same bandwidth. Usually, who uh, the one who avails symmetric are, say, an organization that has... A web server for example and then from time to time they need to update uh, their server content so uh, from time to time they uh, upload files uh, so with that they need to have higher uh, bandwidth for the upload okay uh, so that's this is the their option this is their best uh, DSL option symmetric DSL okay uh, if you notice I know like right now because um uh internet is so very important uh, especially with the pandemic because uh we are bringing businesses at home so if you notice there are uh packages for uh globe pldt before there's only what we see as home but also there's that what we call as a business dsl okay so there is a uh a variant for a home DSL and a business DSL okay I just want to share that uh, what we have here in the diagram is that this is an ADSL okay if you notice there's a much uh, wider frequency 
uh, for the downstream and in effect is there's a much higher bandwidth allotted for the downstream or download as compared to the upstream okay and this is the specific frequency allocated for the upstream and for the downstream again in the dsl is uh it is still connected to a multiplexer later okay in the next slide uh pots is plain old ah, pala nakasul, nak it's already written here plain old telephone system okay yeah this is the one i explained a while ago um yung multiplexer switch with the dial up so same thing with dsl okay later uh and this one okay this is what i'm saying so in the uh dsl still on the subscriber side is it is connected to a uh the islam this is the new one in the dsl there's this dslam it's a multiplexer during our zoom session i will google uh one uh uh, one look of a DSLAM for you to have an idea on how it looks like. So that decides again on the subscribers. Ah, sorry, the, the DSLAM decides on the service provider side. Okay, service provider side. In the subscriber side, in the subscriber side, what we have is the computer, our end device is connected to a DSL modem. Okay, DSL modem. Again, a modem is the one that converts the digital. F computer is in digital signal going to the phone line okay this is the phone line uh, and what is processed in the phone line are analog okay it is taught in your physics days analog and digital signal so there is a, ne a device that needs to translate the digital to analog and that's what the modem does okay there's a micro filter here micro filter is the one that uh, um, separates the voice to the data okay if you notice because of this micro filter is we can use the phone and at the same time we can browse the web right? you can use the internet and at the same time the landline the phone is still active and up not like with dial up in dial up is if you are connected in the internet your phone is v bc okay because there's no means of separating the voice to the data so uh that's what this micro filter does I have here, you know what, you, the router that you set up on your uh, lab, um, that has the capacity to support DSL. But we do have DSL router, the ones, example, if you, if you, the, the, the ones PLDT is giving you, uh, you at home, if you are connected to a DSL internet, eh, uh, the PLDT will give you a DSL router. Uh, the router that we have, uh, say a 2901, it can support DSL so it's modular so you need to do is to connect a dsl module so i have one here okay in this slide and then we have wireless internet okay uh before the wireless okay uh things to take note comparing p uh, dsl to a, a cable internet say cable internet can uh, provide a much higher bandwidth as compared to a DSL, uh, we'll have we'll, we'll compare that during our live se session. We'll look into the different um, internet plans that the cable has versus the DSL. Okay, another um, DSL uh, has this. Um, uh, the DSL has this factor, di distance distance limitation factor. What I mean by distance limitation factor is, so in DSL the setup is. In each area, uh, there's this central office, okay? If you notice with PLDT, there's PLDT Rizal, PLDT Novaliches, PLDT Tagig, okay? Uh, and usually what we have in these offices is this is where we can see yung DSLAM, the multiplexer. This is where the DSL subscribers are connected, okay? This is where all the DSL subscribers are connected. Ah, uh, uh, and then, then wala ako. Uh, and with uh, with that, my point is, if for example, your house is very near, like your neighbor mo 
yung central office say you are li living in PLDT Rizal in Rizal so your neighbor is PLDT Rizal your internet is faster as compared if you are very very far to PLDT Rizal central office so that that's what i mean by this as limitation factor with the P DSL okay not like with cable cable doesn't have that kind of characteristic okay that so i we will have more of the comparison for of the cable and uh, DSL during our live session. So other means of connecting to the internet or having a broadband internet, Wi-Fi. Okay, you had a discussion of Wi-Fi during your Cisco one. We'll have a review of Wi-Fi during our live session. Very important in the Wi-Fi, yung mga standards, the A B G N A C A D. Okay, uh, we'll review on that during our live session. Then we have the cellular mobile right the 2g 3g 4g lte uh, and now the 5g uh, each of these different generation uh, or technologies uh, uh, there are characteristics like one one important characteristics are the bandwidth we'll have again discussions look into this bandwidth of this different uh, in, uh, cellular technologies during our live session and then we have the satellite internet uh, other countries are using satellite internet. Middle East, for example, they use a satellite internet uh, because they don't like digging into the ground. Fiber optic, usually you need to dig into the ground. They want a much faster way of connecting to the internet and their best option is satellite. Uh, like me at home, ano, uh, I'm using signal. Signal is, co there, there's a satellite dish connected to a, a transponder. Okay, uh, satellite transponder. Um, so that's the setup of the satellite internet. Problem with satellite if it rains, diba? like here if it rains, signal ala na no signal. Okay, so uh, with Middle East, it, it is not an issue to them because it's very very rare that uh, it rains in their country. Sometimes ano, once a year lang, once a year lang when it rains. So, best option na sa kanila yung, that, that is their best option, satellite internet. We also have WiMAX, no? Wi-Fi, then there's a new uh, uh, evolved technology, WiMAX. Like, you may have a WiMAX route. Example, Globe will use WiMAX versus, instead of LTE. In the setup, there is like this WiMAX router. They may set it up on top of a building or on an antenna, okay? Or, or a tower, okay? Antenna tower. And... Um, so, uh, we, we, we connect, uh, our packet WiMAX will, not a packet Wi-Fi, but a packet WiMAX will connect on that WiMAX router, then going to the globe infrastructure, okay? So, there. So, LTE, its tough competitor is WiMAX. Japan's using WiMAX, I think also Korea, okay? So, Uh, again, we'll have comparison. I I ha I made a couple of comparisons already, and we'll ha have more discussions on comparing different internet technology uh, during our live session. Of course, I forgot to mention. Of course, uh, I forgot to mention the fiber internet. Okay, in the fiber internet is um, they uh, optimize the usage of the fiber. We go, we take note. Uh, in the internet connection, right? Uh, there, uh, like before, diba, from yung distribution cable, before it may be a copper or a yung coaxial copper, but now they also make it into fiber. It helps to make our internet faster, okay? Fiber internet. And then we have the PPPOE. Okay, uh, PPPoE, it stands for point-to-point -point protocol over Ethernet. Let's discuss this. Uh, I mentioned that uh, in the uh, uh, in the DSL, so on the subscriber side, we have this DSL modem. On the telco side, we have the DSLAM, right? DSL access multiplexer. It's just like a switch. It terminates the connection. 
what we usually do in the DS lang, for example, there is a subscribe, there is a new subscriber. Okay, example me, I am a new subscriber. I will call PLDT. Hey, can you activate na my ano, my uh, connection? So, what they will do on the DS lamp is to just like type this is not the exact setup ano, but let's say they type they will type no shot. Okay? They will uh, um example already there's a physical connection, a port connected to that subscriber. They will activate that port. Okay? That's the only that's one of the thing that the DS lamp does. Uh, next issue is uh, having an identifier. Identifier, what I mean by identifier is identifying that this port in the DS lamp, okay, say port 1, okay, uh, I hope you can visualize that. Ano? Example that like this port, this port, example there's a DS lamp here, this port is indeed connected to uh, this PC one, okay. Say the, the this PC. Let's have a name of John, okay. There. How how can we like have a name, okay? Uh, that this that we have this D DSL uh, subscriber. We have this DSL connection named John, and it is connected specifically to this port. Can we do that in the DS lamp? No. This is why. Uh, we need to manage those connections here in the DS lamp. Okay, so there are specific connections here. Again, uh, we call this as DS lamp. DSL. Okay, two letters na lang. A and M. We need to have a means to associate the ports. Okay, going to uh, those DSL subscribers. And the one that does that is the router. Okay, the router. And how do we do it in the router? We do it through PPPoE. Okay, that's the use of the PPPoE. By concept, uh, uh, we call this specific connections as Ethernet. Anon? Ethernet. Um, Okay, so we use this PPPoE. So we write the PPP point-to-point -point protocol frame. Uh, inside this, there are added information. Okay, uh, we write it over to the Ethernet and the IP packet. And its purpose again is to uh, serve as an identifier of our DSL subscribers. Okay, so that's the use of this PPPoE. Okay. Take note in PPP, point-to-point -point protocol, uh, it was discussed to you by Sir Ray last time, is there's, uh, no, diba? there's this authentication, okay? So, you set a username and a password uh, for each of the connection. That's the use of this one, okay? PPPoE. For us to better uh, see how this looks like, Uh, we'll look into the config. But, but then again, before the config, again, in PPPoE, what we do is we create this tunnel. Okay? There is a tunnel over the Ethernet connection. And inside this tunnel, we encapsulate the packet with PPP. Okay? It is sent across over the cable pro to the ISP uh, from the customer. So, from the customer to the ISP. So, in a way, in here in the ISP, it will, uh, 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 it will know that, okay, ah, this subscriber... Uh, is and this specific IP, uh, this specific IP, uh, this is the uh, username and the password we've set for this customer. That's how it is. Okay, Ina -asso we associate the IP, uh, actually usually the IP address, ano? IP to the uh, username uh, we've set in R2, like in this case in R2, on the ISP side. So, uh, I have here a simple config of the PPPoE, okay. uh, but I have a much more detailed one. Okay, so let's take a look at this uh, setup. This is actually a setup you have in your hands-on laboratory. Uh, this, uh, this activity will help you 
grasp, uh, identify, the, and understand the setup of PPPoE. Okay? So, first, we are to configure, uh, first in the, in the setup. So, we have the ISP. So, in the ISP, we have a router. This switch here, somehow, this one represents the DSLAM. Okay? So, we have to set up here. Okay? Uh, we, have, we, we have two main components in our setup. On the ISP side and on the customer. Okay? So, now, in the ISP side, first thing to do, we need to set a username and a password for each of the DSL subscriber. So, this customer say that's a DSL subscriber. Okay? DSL to, ha? DSL. There. Then, on the ISO, there. So, for each of the DSL subscriber, you need to set a username and a password. Next thing to do is, we need to set a pool. Okay? PPPOE pool. Uh, this is how we set up IP addresses. Uh, it's like DHCP. So, uh, with this pool, this, these are the range of IP addresses to be assigned to those uh, DSL subscriber. Okay? That's how it is. So, uh, say in this case, uh, IP addresses to be assigned 10.0.0.1 up to 10.0.0.10. So, 10.0.0.1, 0.2, 0.3, up to 0.10. So, there's like 10 IP addresses that can be assigned by ISP to DSL subscribers uh, in this pool, uh, which has a name of PPPOE pool. This is a pool name, okay? So, the administrator on the ISP side will be the one to asset the, uh, uh, assign that. Next, we need to create a logical interface. Again, this is a logical interface, virtual template, okay? Um, things to take note, it should be within the range of the IP ad, of, uh, of the IP ad that we've set in the PPPOE pool. So, let's say 10.0.0.254, okay? Next is, we need to set the MTU to 1492. This is a standard. Okay. Uh, MTU, it stands for Maximum Transmission Unit. Uh, that's the size of, it talks about the size of the packet or of the frame. Okay. Uh, there. Okay. It talks about the size of the frame in this case. So, if you remember in Cisco 1, the, there's this maximum size of the frame. Right, it is taught during the chapter five or six Ethernet technology that the maximum size is one thousand five hundred uh, bytes. Okay, one thousand five hundred. Um, if we were to set up PPPoE, what the what this PPPoE will do is to add an overhead, add 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 it. It will add an information, okay, in the packet. So, and that information is eight bytes. Okay, so if we do not set this, if we do not set this uh, MTU one five one four nine two, and let's say the packet is one thousand five hundred, it will add the eight bytes. It will become one thousand five hundred eight. What the device will do, say the router, is it will drop it. Okay, it will drop there. That's an error detection mechanism. Okay, uh, yun. So in order for the packets or frames not to be dropped in order for the encapsulated data not to be dropped is you need to set up the MTU to 1492. Okay? So, 1492 plus 80, 1500 pa rin. Uh, next is, we need to set this up. PPP, a uh, peer, peer, default IP address local pool, PPPOE pool. Somehow, this set up, we associate this local pool we have here to the virtual template okay and then next is uh, we need to um, tell uh, what kind of authentication in PPP we are to use diba? there are two authentication under PPP pop and chop to indicate that we are to use chop we set this up PPP authentication chop calling there is a feature in the in the ano, in the chop yung callback so, that's the use of this call-in. To enable the feature of the callback, you have to type that. So, after that, we need to set up this uh, bro with the BBA, BBA. We call this BBA as Broadband Access Group. Okay? Broadband Access Group, PPP, PPPOE Global. We uh, 
include here the virtual template we created. So we have to type virtual temp dash template one. Okay. Uh, the broadband access group. You know what in uh, in PPP there in PPPOE there's aside from this setup there's other things you can do. Okay. Uh, you can for example say set a limit of the bandwidth for a subscriber. If you recall, diba, there are instances like that. Example, DSL say 5 Mbps lang or 10 Mbps. Okay? You may, you, you, you may do that here in the BBA, BBA group. Okay? In that BBA group. You may do that here. Okay? There. And then, uh, you go to the interface of the router to where the DSLAM is connected and where, of course, the customers are connected. And then you enable PPPoE by typing PPPoE enable group global. And then activate that by typing no shutdown. Okay? There, that's the syntax. And uh, so those are the explanations. So, so, and now on the customer side, is you go to the interface of the customer router and then you enable PPPoE by typing PPPoE enable and then uh, you set a dial pool number say we set we set it to one for this customer so PPPoE client dial pool number one okay number one there so for each of the customer there is a designated dial pool number and then customer uh, we set a dialer interface dialer interface if on the isp side the logical interface is created is the virtual template here on the customer router dialer interface okay that's the interface you need to create under pppoe you need to again set the mtu to 1492 okay in order for in order to somehow like enable the dhcp uh, part you automatic is assignment of the isp to the uh, customer one if you remember we've set this IP, this uh, a local pool of IP address in order for the customer to uh, uh, receive the IP addresses assigned by the uh, ISP is we type this IP address negotiated we need to encapsulate this interface with PPP okay and then we uh, type the dialer pool one okay there a and then enable chop to enable chop in this interface, same as like with what we did with the ISP, we type this. And then we um, associate the username and password we created in the ISP router to this customer. If you remember, I cannot go back eh, no, uh, with the slide show. I cannot go back to the previous slide. But if you remember, we've set a cost one and Cisco PPPoE to the ISP. Okay? To associate that to this customer, we type this one. PPP chap hostname cost one and then PPP chap password Cisco PPPoE. Make sure this is also set up in the customer router. Okay? There. And then uh it has it's uh this again connection has something to do with internet, so we need to set up a default route. Uh, and this time we set it, we set it up to a dialer. Um, we define an uh, the exit interface. We use the dialer one as its exit interface. Okay, so there. So if you notice in here with the PPPoE, things to take note: we've set up a username password, so the router will know that. Uh, okay, example, let's say the ISP router will know. Okay, uh, uh, I, uh, customer one has an IP address, let's say of ten zero zero one. That is its IP address, and another is. Uh, there's already an associated custom. Uh, uh, there's already an associated host name and password with customer with the customer router. Okay. Uh, one thing I can also share with PPPoE, for example, this PPPoE it helps in the setup. Let's for example, okay, cost one here. Uh, oh, he's not. Uh, no, he is not uh, paying his internet connection. Okay, so how would you know? Uh, in your infrastructure that uh, what interface to shut down to deactivate what account will you deactivate so this setup helps right because there's already a, an association of the username 
Okay? Or say host name, for example, yun nga, say Juan de la Cruz. Uh, so, there's already an association of the username to the interface to which this username is connected. Uh, again, yan, to verify, uh, show IP interface brief. Expect you should see the dialer interface. Of course, there should be an IP add assigned to that. And then, both of its layers 1 and 2 are active. Both are should be up. Okay? And then, to check, the MTU again should be set into 1492 and encapsulated with PPP. Uh, you may use debug to uh, check if there is an, an indeed negotiation and to identify if Say these certain issues occur in the uh, PPPOE, PPPOE setup. So this ends uh, first part of chapter 3. Keep safe. Together we learn as well.